Welcome, everybody, to the Awaken Sober podcast, a podcast about life and recovery through Christ. Yeah, First buddy. First off, we want to thank you, Tactile Turn, for being our very supportive sponsor. Uh, we want to make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. We are on all plot, pod, you know, podcast platforms. That's okay. Well, we are now, especially since I yeah. run run two of them each week. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, we're also on Facebook, so check us out on uh, on social media. Yep. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a continuation of step three. We're going to dive a little bit deeper. But first off, something pretty big happened last night. Yeah, it did. Launch of Celebrate Recovery at the Bridge Church, man. Yeah. Oof. That was, that was a lot of fun. It was. It was amazing. I left my cameras at home, though, um, uh, because I stayed up there so late uh, getting things ready that I didn't get home in enough time without rushing out the door after hopping in the shower. And I left cameras here. I really wanted to have a camera up there, record it all. And can't really do much with it since anonymity and confidentiality is such a... That was funny. You're like, <laughs> this isn't going to get shared. It's <laughs> yes. not going to get shared, I promise you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a busy day yesterday, but it was like JD, when I work out with him, I put him through a 30 minute, but just like one right after the other exercise. I'm surprised he's not hurting today with his shoulders and his neck. Well, we're about to find out because he's going to go play pickleball with us after the show. <laughs> we'll get some of that acid out. Be yeah, right. no yeah. doubt. Um, yeah, what an incredible night. I guess before we go into all that, though, let's find out how people are doing. D, you were missing last time. I was, I was putting in my last day at, uh, the position there and I'm stepping away from that. Hopefully my hair grows back. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I get to go back into being a counselor, being a therapist, what I enjoy doing the most, being able to make disciples without actually preaching to these individuals. By the way, you know, the way I carry myself, the way I conduct myself and, you know, that was one thing I enjoyed. So um, not to brag or boast, but this month at work, I was got um, employee of the month. And I'm like really excited yeah. about it, you know. Good job, D. It was incredibly well-deserved. It was. And one of the things that they said in it, and it, so everybody can read it, that it was my faith. It was one of the, it was one of the things that, you know, I was true to my faith and my um, devotion to recovery. And they, and they posted that so people would actually see that, you know, I am... A man of faith. Wow. Yeah, that's it's exactly. Wow. I did not, you know, but yeah. it was they put it on there. Yeah. And it was even posted on Facebook when Kobe shared it. So it was like, okay. If, if I'm being a Facebook guy. Yeah. yeah. Our yeah. Facebook guy. Shout out. Yeah. Hey, Kobe. <laughs> if I mean if I'm being recognized for my faith, then thank you, God. I'm doing something right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, without a doubt. So, uh, I'm so happy. how are you doing then? I'm doing good today, man. Uh had a couple tough, couple of tough um, moments. I don't want to call them they were bad days. They were I had some bad moments. But uh, when you talk to your psychiatrist and he's giving you a huge thumbs up for the way you're handling things, I think you're doing something right. So thankful for uh, my coping skills that I've learned over the you know over the few years of my recovery. Uh, having my sponsor there to talk to me when I needed them, and that and an excellent launch of celebrate recovery it, it was amazing and that made it showed me last night that everything i've been putting forth into it was definitely worth it so it made me feel really good so what's the real reason you made it through all of that still sober and good because of step three i've chose god as my higher power there you go <laughs> <laughs> that was an easy one, huh? That was an easy one, yeah, yeah. I just sure. tossed it up there, nice little softball. And there you go. Run. Mikey, how is it with your soul, my brother? My soul is better than it's been in a long time. Um, you know, Jeremy loves the word content. I love, I love that word too. Um, I would just say at peace, you know? Mm. Um, it's been a really good couple of weeks. Uh, last week, you know, and, and I referenced it, uh, on the episode last week, you know, um, I had three of the most important men in my life, sit me down and be honest with love. And it was the, one of the biggest and best things that I could have had at that time. You know, um, the more I think about it, the more it's like, yeah, you know what? All of those things were, were true. But at the same time, I advocated for myself. Uh, I took it. I, 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 
I soaked it in. I processed it. It wasn't easy, but it was uncomfortable. And that is exactly what I needed at that time. Yeah, you did well. You did well. Running is the easiest thing to do. Yeah. You didn't. Um, and I mean afterwards, because you couldn't have made it out the house. <laughs> <laughs> I would have tried so hard. It's hard to get out of the I studio. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but you didn't even run afterwards. And that's when we usually do it, right? We get out. We're like, man, screw these guys. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't know what they're talking about. And then we just run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it didn't happen. No. And I mean, I, I went to Jeremy's house right after and we continued our conversation. It was fantastic. And, uh, um, you know, getting through that really showed me how at peace I can be, you know, because that was, that was the storm and the storm was brewing inside me. And by, you know, accepting that God put you guys in my life for a reason, you know, and it wasn't attacking, even though it felt like it at the time, it wasn't an attack. It was, um, you guys were trying to awaken something in me and, and God was trying to awaken something in me. And that was, I, I, it it was incredible, man. And I, and I've told everybody, you know, the people I've told about it, I'm like, they're like, how was it? How did it go? And I'm like, it, it sucked. You know, it it was really, really hard, but it was so awesome because I never would have had that before. I never would have had accountability like that before you know, love and honesty like that before. And frankly, I owe it to God and I owe it to the the men in my life. And if that doesn't make you peaceful, then I don't know what will. (laughs) And you know, what's funny is every time that happens, you hear the same thing afterwards. If people will surrender to it and just make sure that they, they hear the love and and you have to make sure when you're doing it, that you're showing love. Right. Cause I could, I could, I could give you the truth without love. I could give you the truth with love. And if you do it properly, they should feel loved afterwards. I mean, yeah, they're going to be uncomfortable and it it really sucks, but I've never heard somebody say, I don't want to ever do that again. You know, I, I mean, that was the worst experience of my life when Mm -hmm. done properly. It's just never been said yet. Yeah. Matthew 18, if you do it right, you want a brother. And I mean, scripture tells us that too. You know, if they listen to you, you have won a brother. And that's what it's about. I mean, and bringing it up, you know, that's, I had that same type of situation happen to me. And like once a few podcasts back, you brought up the fact that you only known this Derek right here. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for that moment that that had happened to me, you'd have known the other Derek. Yeah. You know, but because that had happened and I surrendered to that, and then I'm working on who I am today. Yeah. And hopefully get better sooner or later. Yeah. And, and his was a lot like yours. There was that moment part way in where it switched and and it was, okay, I'm not going to run and I'm not going to say screw everything. And, and you surrendered to it. Mm -hmm. And, and I seen the moment in you and I seen the moment in Derek when it happened and what a great moment. Cause I'm like, man, if this happens to me, I hope I can, I could be as humble in that situation as you two did without getting all protective and defensive and, and all those things to say, all right, let me take this honest look at myself. And that that takes a level of humility that most people can't reach in that moment. So thanks. It's, <laughs> There's that ego. No, just kidding. But, um, the, you know, uh, Brene Brown, I'm, I, I know you know the name, know the name. Um, and we watched another video of, it was the power of vulnerability. And it's, she, she, it says, lean into the uncomfortability, be there, be in it. Because without that, there is no growth. And I always say, if you're not growing, you're dying. So that is exactly what I needed. We needed to grow and be a better version of ourselves. And to, to have that with love is just that much better. Yeah. We don't grow in comfortability. No. It's that uncomfortability where we grow and it's, uh, it sucks, but it's fun. It is. Yeah. After. Yeah. Yeah. How's your soul, Shane? You know, after last night, I can't say anything, but it is full. <laughs> I mean, there was something missing. And I could go visit all the celebrate recoveries in the world, but when it's at where you plant your roots and um, you've been working with a team and developing a team um, for that moment, and then that happens, man, it's just, it's it's so beautiful to sit back and watch. Um, Because I could care less about being on stage, right? I I had fun up there with Christina doing our couple's testimony. Um, Left the song, but she rewrote I mean, the majority of it was rewritten and all new. 
very short up front, which is neat. I love it when you get rid of all the, all the using something, you know, stuff. And, and here's the quick highlights of what happened. Now here's what God has done since. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. And, um, it was fun. I guess if I wouldn't have put the one picture in the video, I'd have had her crying on stage. Cause that's what I went for in that video. Like you want to make her cry? Like she makes you cry? With yes. You? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I got to bring something up. So when he when he kept putting the paper and he wasn't flipping it. Oh my gosh. I poked Katie. I go, hey, you check that out. He's doing it on purpose. Yeah, it was great. Because <laughs> I knew she wanted it to stay in order by flipping it. <laughs> she and I just move it, it over. And she'd like line it up perfect. I was like, oh, it's, all, it's perfect. It's every, so mo every now and then you catch the moment when he went to put it, like he was going to flip it, but then he just, <laughs> you see this hand start to twist. And he, <laughs> That's love. <laughs> right? I got to mess with her, man. But that one picture from Victoria's wedding, she started laughing. And so it took Christina out of the... Right. Because, I mean, I guess that's what's fun about learning how to edit video, right? Is I could take these pictures and put them into that video and yeah. and just have us in the, in the very background just growing and growing until it comes to the to the end picture. So, yeah, man, what a, just what a great night. I loved watching. I loved seeing all the people there. But what God has already been doing, I mean, through the training time and then last night, um, there's people that will be back that, never thought they would ever walk step foot into a celebrate recovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those no, people that showed yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's an inside thing. Cause we used to make the joke at the last place that we had worked. There was those, there was the church and then there was those people mm -hmm. that showed up on Thursday nights. Yeah. And then with us, it was, there was CR and then there was those people that only showed up on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. yep. And some of those people, not from that particular spot, but what we would say were those people showed up last night and we'll be back. Yeah. 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 They were blown away. Um, even Steve, I, I stopped by the, the men's retreat. I mean, the, the men's night out pickleball and, um, just to talk to him and say, thank you for everything. And, um, Steve was like, that's how I like worship to go. Because he, he said, man, it was alive. It was, and I said, yeah, of course it was. It was. It wasn't people just checking off boxes. Not to say that about the people of, mm -hmm. of the bridge, because I, you know, I love my Sunday morning services, but like, uh, it kind of goes that difference between religion and spirituality. You know, the religion was people not wanting to go to hell. That's your Sunday morning people. Spirituality is those who've been to hell and ain't trying to go back. Right. And that's CR. <laughs> I love that. And I, and I, yeah, so that was my first, so I went to one la where you previously were and then, uh, made, a um, a contract with my therapist. Shout out. Christine. Yeah. Um, uh, she goes, okay, so, um, let's try something different, which is, you know, I need growth, right? I need to be uncomfortable. And last night was the first CR that I was really invested in. You know what I mean? And it was only my second one, but it was like, no, I'm coming here and I'm going to do it because one, I said, I'm going to do it and I'm going to stick to that. And two, I'm really going to try and get as much out of it as I can. And we'll be back. I, we're coming, I'm, we're coming back next week. So, yeah. So what did you think? So you're an AA guy. Yeah. Um, this is a whole different program. I mean, we know the steps line up with each other, right? Yeah. They all come straight out of the Bible, whether it's secular or Christ centered that, I mean, the steps are, are taken straight from the Bible. If you look at everything, what did you think? What did you think of that night? I thought it was a good, uh, it, honestly, it was a, it was a more joyous side of recovery, you know? Um, not to say that you can't have fun. I mean, we, we, in, in our Saturday morning group, there's a lot of laughter. There's a lot of smiles. Like it's a, it is really, really, it's a great positive meeting, you know? Um, but last night was different because, you know, it's, it's giving praise, you know, it's giving praise to something other than us. And everybody is there for the same thing, giving it up to God, you yeah. know? And when you're in a, uh, in an AA group, you know, not everybody's God is exactly the same. Right. Which is one thing that drew me to it at, at first, you know? And, um, but to see that and to see everybody like, you know, dancing and jumping around. And that was something that I was afraid of when I first went to the first one, you know, I was like, I'm not, I'm not into all that kind of, you know, worship and, and whatnot. But now it's like, I find myself clapping and tapping my foot and 
dancing and I'm like, what is going on here? And it's, it's, it's for my recovery. And so how could you not like jump into it? You know, how could you not appreciate something like that? It's, hence the name celebrate recovery. It makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Right? Even at the yeah. last one, there wasn't a whole lot of, I mean, by the time you came, it was, um, kind of winding after, down after COVID. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we had shrunk, you know, COVID mm -hmm. really, really hurt it. Um, and it wasn't a lot of, I mean, unless there's chip night, it, it, it wasn't right. a whole lot of, ah. Yeah, there was some, but it was, it wasn't like last night. I mean, last night was like a, it was like a concert, man. It was cool. It was yeah. awesome. And I love live music. So I, I don't know how many times I said, that's a really nice guitar. Yeah, that's a. Yeah. Uh, that drummer's pretty decent. <laughs> yeah, last night we, we had a loud drummer. Um, yeah. Yeah, he could bang some drums and. Yeah. They but just, that, even though they don't participate in the program yet, and I say yet, because you've seen things stirring even in them as they were up there preparing. And then we did talk through and, and as the night went on and they got to feed off of those of us that, that had been brought up from hell by Jesus. They got to see that. And they're asking, what do I got to do to be a part of? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was, just come. Give us four weeks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, we'll refund that misery. I promise. And I think that's a good segue into what we're talking about with step three, you know, surviving versus thriving. You know, you, you can do all the things that you are suggested to do and recommended to do, but sometimes you still find yourself just trying to get by, you know, or staying in survival mode or staying in survival mode. Yeah. Stuck in that, in that rut, you know, and that's where I feel like I was before I, before I turned to God, you know, it was like that plateau. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I am, I am surviving. You know, I'm not thriving like I was early on in my recovery. And then once I gave it up to God and, you know, uh, the, the higher power, you know, that was when uh, it was, uh, my eyes were open and I, I, it just kind of reaffirmed, you know, what I was doing. So I wasn't survive. I'm not surviving anymore. I am thriving. It's, it's pretty wild that even when you have a bad day, when Jesus is your higher power, that bad day still isn't as bad as it would be or could be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think it's some of the things that you just went through that we talked about the other day. And that's why I asked the question I did. In survival mode versus still being able to thrive through those things. Right. Survival mode, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. There's right. No Tell them where I'd actually be sitting. Would I be out using or would I have went even deeper into my past and went and got my daughter? I ain't going to lie. You know? Yeah. Because then nothing more. <clears throat> like I shared, uh, I felt bullied by this guy in the court. And it was like, anybody ever tried to bully me before? Found out real quick. I'm not the, I'm not that guy. Yeah. And I wanted to so, you know, <laughs> but because of my being able to thrive in Christ, I didn't have a bad day because of it. And they did, they did, the moment did last for a period of time, but it wasn't a bad day because of it, you know? So be, one thing about thriving in Christ that's worked with me, I, I don't have bad days. I had those bad moments. Sometimes it's from eight in the morning till three 30 in the evening, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still a moment. It's not a right. whole day. Yeah. Right. And even between eight and three, when it was a bad moment, you still went out and did good things. Yes. Because you went to the gym. Um, you and JD were out for a little while. Then as soon as you guys got back, you came inside and we had a conversation. So even then, it's not the entire time. It's bad. Right. No. Um, when you don't have that higher power, though. When it's not Jesus, let's put it that way, because... Look, I don't care. You could have a higher power and it needs to start somewhere. But there's nothing like Jesus. Right. It's just a whole different ball game. <laughs> we need them yeah. to start somewhere, wherever that is. It was like last night, a gentleman talked about that uh, he was wanting to get back into a church. He just couldn't find his way to get back to a church on a Sunday morning. And I shared with him, what got me back in the church was... My recovery, celebrate recovery. Yeah. I started going to celebrate recovery before I started going back to church. If it wasn't for celebrate recovery, I may, I may not have went back to church. Mm -hmm. It is some people's church. I mean, some people will, will only go to celebrate recovery, never show up on a weekend, right? Yeah. 
I like people to do both. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a community that can happen on a weekend that you won't have on a Tuesday or Thursday or whatever day your celebrate recovery is on. But there's also a community that's going to happen on a Tuesday or Thursday that won't happen on Sunday. Right. Mm-hmm. It's all and the so, freaks come out. Yeah. <laughs> well, you want to ask, where's Jesus going to be at when he comes back? He's not going to be on church on Sunday. He's going to be at Celebrate Recovery on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, those yeah. are the people he come for. Yeah. So that's who he hung out with. Right. So he's not going to come back and hang out with the others. Mm-hmm. Like, not those Pharisees. people. <laughs> you Pharisees. <laughs> you bunch of heathens. Yeah. So, so what did, what did surviving look like to you, like to you, Shane? Mm. I don't even, it is hard to remember besides just misery every day. I mean, I was always on the run and not on the go. See, these days I like to be on the go. I like to be doing things all the time. Yeah. But I was always on the run. And, and there's a difference. Like I was running from something. Um, and so it was just, how do I stay high? How do I stay out of jail, out of prison? And it was just, I was always on a run. I mean, never anything good. I didn't have any hopes, no dreams, no goals, except for to be, have more money than what I had the day before. And I think that's all it was too, was all about money. Mm -hmm. Money and power. I think I said that before on this show. Mm -hmm. That's all the past was, was money and power. So you had prosperity in riches, not outside riches. I didn't even have prosperity. <laughs> Man, there was no prosperity, dude. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean. Yeah. I, I, I guess you could say, I, man, I spent everything I had. I didn't have a pot to pee in or a window to throw it out of, I guess. And I still made mm-hmm. great money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what's crazy. So prosperity, I don't even know how, how you would even put that in there. Um, and now in Christ, though, I'm the richest I ever have been. And that's what's crazy. Like last night, yesterday, I I didn't know how bad I had missed it until it started. And once last night started, I'm like, this is the riches. This is, this is what it's about. They just kept pouring in too. I mean, we had a big crowd at at six o'clock. There was a big crowd. The cars just kept coming and Mm -hmm. kept coming. I was like, dude, they're still coming. Which yeah, I think was you because you had come in the door not long after that. Right. We came in right at seven. <clears throat> right. Or, so you were like one of the last cars. I'm like, dude, they're yeah. still coming in. Yeah. It was you would, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to have a parking lot crew at that parking lot. We need, I'm, we need I'm gonna the have signs. to get there early. How about that? We need we need we need to get some signs out there. So did you, did you know, your wife tell you what happened to me last night? So I'm turned around. So we're wearing, you know, the celebrate recovery shirts. So I've got my back to the street. You know, and just waving at people from, you know, backwards and stuff. So they would see that, hey, Celebrate Recovery is going on over here. And then your wife says something about, you know, shaking my rear. And that's so I'm out there. Oh, no. A cop come pulled out of the cemetery across the street watching me. <laughs> like St. Louis? Uh, no. County. Okay. <laughs> and he went, and he comes out and goes mm. down. I'm thinking he's pulling in because he went bad, you know, down that side road there to come like, where the parking lot's at. I'm like, he's coming in. Oh my gosh. And not more than two minutes later, here comes another one. I'm like, Oh my goodness. You know what he did? He goes, you got to see this guy on our road. <laughs> yeah. He, he was right away into yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to have them park out back because we had the big back doors. I mean, we could open the, yeah. when it's nice out, we could open a big garage door on the expansion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we could just bring people in from back there where they're going to be parking more. So that way it's, they don't have to walk all the way around. <laughs> but I parked on the street. Yeah. 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 I do that on Sunday mornings, man. Yeah. That's the one bad thing. There's, there's not a lot of good parking there, but let me tell you, I got a lot of messages that says, man, the Holy Spirit was moving. moving right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You shared that with me, that one gentleman. And I thought I had seen him in there, but I didn't pay attention because I didn't actually recognize him, recognize him. But I did recognize him when I seen him. And then when you said that, I was like, oh, yeah, that was him. Yeah. And that that was awesome. Yeah, seeing some people last night show up that I didn't think would show up. And yeah. Yeah, it was was pretty nice. How about you? What was what was thriving versus surviving like for you? 
surviving was stagnant. Surviving was not growing. Mm. And that's how, that's how I like, if you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah. You know? So if I'm just stagnant <clears throat> and not white, you know, working a program, doing the things, you know, okay, but stagnant. And if I'm stagnant, I am not growing at all. And if I'm not growing, I'm dying. So stagnant equals death. So surviving was, <clears throat> surviving was not understanding that I needed to give myself up to something greater, even greater than what I had already given it up to. Thriving was accepting the fact that I needed to give it up to God. And when I did give it up to God, the proverbial light bulb went off, you know? And, um, honestly, my life has been better since that day. Better, but we still have challenges. Oh yeah. Oh, the work ain't done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I can get through those challenges so much better now, you know? And I can say survival mode for me was the last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, from an outside perspective, I would agree with you there. I, that was, that was survival mode. Um, and I know who God is. I know what he's capable of. I know what he had, has planned for us, but I still got in the way. And that survival mode will do that to us. It will allow us not to see things clearly, not to trust, not to believe. And no matter what, he shows up. Never in a time that I want. Never. Mm -hmm. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> Never in the time that I want, but in the time that's needed. Yeah. I mean, it's usually the last minute because it's how much trust are you going to put in me? Are you going to say you're going to trust or are you actually going to trust? Which one are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to stay in survival mode until you show me. It's dumb. Mm -hmm. we, we talk about that, you know, we provide wants or we provide needs, not wants. It's exactly what God does. He provides needs, does, does not provide wants. Now, sometimes when you want, you know, is your need. Yeah. This is nice, but. Yeah, that's when we learn and we lower our expectations. And exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> but at the same time, as you say, you were feeling you were in the surviving mode, but you were also in a thriving position as well. There was, there was a few of us out there that didn't give up on what God had planned. Right. And that, you know, we had to be there to host, host you up a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. no problem with that. Yeah. It. Let me tell you, and I, and I spoke about it, and it, it was hard to talk about it last night, right? Um, there were some things I wanted to say that just wouldn't come out because then it, it get too choked up. No, I um, I'm going to have to watch that. I'm supposed to be up front a, a little bit, and I can't uh, be breaking down all the time when I'm trying to speak. Up, <laughs> oh, chains up there. Yep. Here we go. Here come the tears. Yeah. it's uh, <laughs> First time I ever saw this man actually get in the middle of talking, it had to go silent. He baptized his mom for the first yeah. time. And, dude, that was amazing. Yeah. And I, I could feel <clears throat> what he was, you know, I, I don't know if I could actually feel what he was feeling, but I could feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, I mean, he was talking like, yeah. <laughs> like he, was, <laughs> he didn't know what to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would never stumble over words, man. Right. It, it, they would just flow. And and that's why they tell me to get up there and just shoot from the hip. Just, just get up there and do you. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, things like that I couldn't do. And last night, man, there were so many things I, I wanted to think my people for not leaving me on the island alone, not allowing me to. And, um, man, that stuff just wouldn't come out. <laughs> it would not come out. Yeah, right. <laughs> survival to you. What was survival? They got to get got before I get got. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank that's you. The old <laughs> that's, yeah. I mean, that, that's what it was, right? You know, I mean, I, Never had a job that I got made good money at. I mean, construction I did and stuff, but at the same time, the money I made went right back out mm -hmm. using, doing whatever yeah. and stuff. And I just was living, my surviving was making sure nobody was out there to get me. You know? Yeah. And if they was, they got got. <laughs> That's so funny too. Like surviving was not, was trying not to get caught Yeah, for me, you know, always looking over my shoulder. That was survival. You know, and it wasn't anybody I was in trouble with or anything. It was the law. Yep. <laughs> That's all it was. 
That is still look over my shoulder. Law getting us. <clears throat> right. Yeah. But, so, I mean, yeah. look at survival now. Because mm-hmm. we'll, we'll get put in survival mode or, or we put ourselves in survival mode, but it's a lot different of a survival versus survival from before, before Jesus, after Jesus. It's BC. It's, <laughs> yeah. Before COVID? Before Christ. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Before Christ. Well, I forgot about that one. Yeah, I'm just always using before COVID these days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember a time before COVID. Yeah, it's it's, it's hard to do. Yeah. I, I remember a lot of really good times before COVID, before that thing happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. Survival is different now, though. Yeah. I you think have- it's, I think you get more back to like, uh, like, you know, in, in, in the world, fight or flight, you know, that is what survival is down to the innate beasts of the world. It is fight or flight. It is survive or die. Now it's okay. I can take a step back and I'm not just, it's not, I can either go or I could stay. It's I could stay in my pity or I could go. And, you know, like you said, used to be running. Now I'm, go, I'm on the go. Yep. You know, now it is, no, I want that challenge because I don't want to, I don't want to be stuck in survival mode. And if I'm stuck in survival mode, again, I'm dying. Yeah. And, and we will die one way or the other, spiritual death or an actual death. Mm -hmm. Also surviving now, as opposed to before, I have a survival kit. Mm. I have a, I have a book that I, that I write and, you know, journal in. I have a sponsor I can call when I need to speak to him. I have friends that I can contact and say, Hey, something ain't right here with this, with me, this, you know, and that. So yeah, before it was surviving on my own. Now I actually have a survival kit that helps me thrive. Yeah, you didn't even have a Rambo knife before. I did not. <laughs> we're, we're trying to make it with our hands. Yeah, a Swiss army knife. Yeah. None of the, all of those things didn't work. Man, yeah. are you crazy? It was a $10 knife you got at the swap meet that within two days of using it, it, it the blade was wobbly. Right? <laughs> Fell off. So I love that you, uh, you talk about will. So how has acting on your own will, your own self-will affected mm. your life? <laughs> We talk about willfulness as opposed to willingness. Yeah. Um, my own will screwed me up the last year even. I mean, I allowed something to control me. Um, and then I try to do it on my own power. It's in me. It's about me. And the whole time it's never been about me. If I turn it to what it's supposed to be and make it about God, things change. Um but I like to have a habit of making it about me. Oh, woe is me. Mm. Oh, we all do that. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a whole lot of willingness to last year. I needed it now. I needed that instant gratification. I was back to the old behaviors. Yeah. Right. Wasn't using, but the old behaviors were there. I needed instant gratification. <sighs> yeah. Big time. I can agree with that. For in my own life. Hmm. And it really sucks when you go back to that. You know, it not, sucks even worse when you don't notice it. Right. You know, like you're just like, okay, I'm doing everything right. Are you, are you really? The beauty of having people around you, that survival kit around you say, yo, mm-hmm. you're, you're, you, you're not doing well. You feel like you are, but you're not. And it's hard to receive feedback no matter what. Yeah. There's a great book out there. I know you mentioned Brene Brown, but um, I forgot what her name is. But if you just Google, thanks for the feedback. What a phenomenal book. It's on Audible if you don't read. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's worth a listen and it's worth a read. It is. Because um, learning how to receive feedback is an art. Learning how to give feedback is an even bigger art. Um, and it teaches you both sides, like how to really receive that feedback. <clears throat> so if you struggle with that, get that book because it will help you be able to see not everybody's attacking you. Yeah. It's by Sheila Heen and Douglas Stone. Yep. Mm. There you go. Thanks for the feedback by Sheila Heen and Douglas Stone. What a phenomenal book. Yeah. I it actually really is. Kinda, it was. I kind of want to read it now. It was, I picked that book up right after I had my situation where I felt the attack and I had to surrender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to go work with my brother at the restaurant 
And I just went in and cleaned up. You know, that was one of the greatest jobs I think I ever had because I didn't have to talk to nobody. <laughs> I didn't have to mess with nobody. I just yep. went in there and I put my um, earbuds in and I listened to that book. And it was, yeah, it was great. Right on. Yeah, because he asked me right when he when he took the time off of work, he said, man, what's something I could do? What's something I could read? I said, thanks for the feedback. It, it, there's just something about that book that when you listen to it, it, it makes sense. And it'll calm you down to where you could receive things. Mm -hmm. It was that and then drop the rock. Yep. Boom, boom. Yeah. Yep. I'm on that right now. <laughs> so. Yep. Drop the rock, man. Let me tell you, it's a great book. It is. Uh, oh, yeah, it is. I use it. I use it. Yeah. Um, I bring, there's a lot of things that I bring from the secular world into Celebrate Recovery. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what people need to do is take things from Celebrate Recovery. We need to just be able to combine everything and say there's some great tools in both fellowships yeah let's utilize them mm. um i push recovery period i don't care where it's from i don't care where you go just go i don't care what your higher power is right now i know where i would love to see it for you <laughs> because i know what to make the biggest difference mm -hmm. in your life and that's jesus right but if you got to have a group of drunks as your higher power at the moment then that so be it good orderly direction yeah I like that group of drunks, though, man, because I've never you heard You did that. say that the other day, too. Like, yeah. I like that. It's nice. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it's just funny because, I mean, that's what we were, a right. group yeah. of drunks. And Absolutely. yet, we're able to guide other people. Yeah. Um, we, we talk about, you know, why is it so hard to um, receive good word, right? We, we talk about... Um, you know, we always downplay it or downsize it, you know, like, Hey man, really, that, that, you did a really, really great job. Oh yeah. Whatever. You know, it's, it's okay. Yeah, I did. I did. It was all right. It's like, no man, you did a really great job. You should feel proud of yourself. Uh, okay. I'm proud of my, uh, would you take the compliment? Right. <laughs> it's really hard to take a compliment, but taking criticism is for, I mean, for me, it was, it was a lot easier. One, I think it was just because I was so critical on myself all the time, and I still am very much so, um, giving that up slowly. Um, but, yeah, I could always take the bad rather than take the good. Saying thank you is hard. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, so that I'm dealing with, too, man, you know. Lady came up to me last night and says, thank you. For what? <laughs> you know? Because I didn't really think I would do anything, but the fact she had asked me, <clears throat> said, "Hey, get your um, get you know, should my husband go to a group?" I said, "Sure, come follow me. I'm going over to this one right over here. I'll take you over there." That dude showed up, opened up, and she comes to me and thank you. And I'm really thinking nothing of it, you know, because mm -hmm. that's just I don't. But I I really I guess I made a difference in that woman's life, and I need to appreciate what God's doing through me. Yeah. You know, yeah. I may not accept it so much for myself, but know that I do serve God. That is the higher power I have chosen to follow. Mm -hmm. And he is going to work through me. And when somebody sees it, I need to be appreciative of it. It's kind of hard. I mean, yeah, we need to be able to say thank you. And we need to be able to say you're welcome. Yes. Mm -hmm. And take those compliments. God has gifted each of us and gifted us well, gifted us to be good at what we do. It's okay to say thank you. I mean, when we say thank you to them, we're saying thank you to God for blessing us, for for gifting us the way that he has. This has a lot to do with, you know, before I had that competitive attitude and I was always out for the win. Mm -hmm. so I didn't care what anybody thought. Now it's like, when you know, I'm not even trying to get the win and the win seemed to come and people wanted like, hey, good job. And, you know, like employee of the month. I never saw that coming. And, you know, when it came, it was yep. like, wow, okay. <laughs> you know? I think they're called the promises. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We yeah. slowly understand that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. And he does it, mm -hmm. especially when we give him the glory, right? I, I, we need to say thank you because we did it. Because he gifted us to do so. Mm. That's my next question. What's the difference between our will and God's will. I don't know how you really answer that question besides you, you have to truly 
have a heart change in order to figure out what God's will is for your life. But when we seek prayer and we, we truly ask God, you know, what is your will for my life? We have to be willing to listen and we have to, your will, not mine be done. I, I, and I think I talked, I don't know if it was last week or, or one of the podcasts recently when Jesus was, was getting ready to be handed over and, and he's praying and he, he says, you know, take this cup from me. Not my will, but your will be done. We have to be willing to accept whatever terms that is. Like I may want something for my life, but it may fall outside of what God really wants for my life. Yeah. And am I willing to accept that? That's the tough one. Because my will and God's will are usually not always the same. I can say my will might be or close to, but it's, it's never exactly lined up. I won't have enough faith in myself, which means I don't have enough faith in God to do what he wants me to do. Or I just want something a little bit easier. I think the biggest thing with the will situation is the timing. Mm -hmm. You know, his will, my will. I Same note as you, that I feel that I'm close, but not nowhere, you know, near his will for my life. And that's mainly because of the timing. His timing. I want things done by this time. He's like, just chill. Yeah. I, I got you, man. You know I got you. I brought you this far. I'm not just going to leave you or forsake you. It's written in the word. It comes out and says, you know, I'll never leave you or forsake you. So just chill. You know? But mm -hmm. I was like, no, nah, man, you know, if I could bring up my daughters, I would love, to, I want them in my life today, right here, right now. Maybe God's not, that's not God's plan for me right now. I know he wants them in my life and if I have a relationship with them, I do talk with them and that, but as I look at it, if I was to get too involved, they was to be here, I would get, my life would be more involved into them and then what God's got called for me to do. Cause you know, it's, I've lost so much time with them and I want to, I'd be on the failure part of wanting to make up all that time mm -hmm. when God's like, you know, we go from today and keep moving forward. All right. And I'm always, I'm going to be back here try to fix all these years that I missed. So I, I really feel that his will right now is, you know, for me to just to keep doing as I'm doing and the time will come when he's ready for them and everything to be as his will. It's the timing thing. But have More you noticed else. when it is in his time, how much better and different it is? Oh yeah. That's yeah. what's sad. I, my will, man, I, I could picture some, some really good things happening. But when we, I mean, no matter what, we have to wait for God's timing. But if we're willing to wait for God's timing to happen, the way it happens, you could look at it and go, all right, God, I see why. Mm -hmm. Even though it sucks, I waited this long, I could see why. Um, I mean, there's a reason why we've taken so long to, to start some of the programs and to start some of the things we've done and I could see it, but now I got to make sure I don't drag my feet to make it my will, not God's will. Mm. And it's a tough thing. Back to the launch. You know, we, when we went to lunch yesterday before the launch even happened, there was some conversations that were, hap were happening that, you know, if we would have did it, like you said, in your timing, when you wanted to do it, them conversations wouldn't have been had. Right. And here they're being had and I'm sitting in the back like, okay, <laughs> you know, yeah, we'll go with that. But the fact is what you're saying there, you know, so much better in God's timing than in ours. There's so much more, more rewarding. Yeah. When we do actually surrender to his will, things seem to be more rewarding. You know, when I got to see my daughter for the first time after 12 years, She's here. We're having a great time. She got baptized in the church that I served at. And like, if it would have been, she probably would have never have been baptized if I would have got her what I wanted her. Right. You know, but once again, the more rewarding that she had gotten baptized right there on the spot, you know, within days of being here, she was ready to be baptized. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. God's timing, God's will. 
And it's what's pretty neat, though, about God's will is it's not this straight and narrow path, right? It, it's not his his will. His his will really will <laughs> encompass quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We like to even paint outside those lines a lot of times, mm -hmm. but God's will, God's plan for our life is a lot bigger than what we can ever dream of. We just got to be willing to sit back and relax. No instant gratification. Right. Mm -hmm. Got to chill. Yeah. <laughs> life on life's terms. So it's like, okay, so is it life on life's terms or if it, is it life on God's terms? It's life on God's God terms. terms. Right. I mean, look, the, the secular world has given us a lot of really good things when it comes to recovery. But there's things that we don't give God enough credit for and we give the devil too much credit for. There just is. Everything that goes wrong, we blame on the devil. Everything that goes good, we give ourselves kudos for. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And you see, devil ain't that powerful. Yep. And God is. And so we kind of need to start reversing that and giving God the credit and give the devil none because he ain't powerful enough. Mm. I mean, it's written that, you know, before you even feel the devil attack you, he had to go ask permission to do so, you know? So omnipresent so, does not happen with the devil. <laughs> right. So, I mean, for him to attack it, 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 yeah, we just give him way too much power. And so, yeah, I would say life on God's terms mm -hmm. if we're willing to do so. Willingness is a big thing, isn't it? Radical acceptance, willingness. Surrender. Yeah. Surrender's a hard one. Hmm. I mean, we have to do that at day, daily. Right. And growing up in a, in a world where you bow down to nobody, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it gets yeah. even, you know, but you're going to bow down to something you don't, you can't even see. It, yeah, it's, it can be tough. But once you do, I mean, it, that, I mean, like I said, I like to walk around and try to be a billboard for what God can do for a person in their life because it's what he's done for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it took recovery to bring me back to Christ, which is a plus, but it did. So those of y'all out there in recovery who have not truly found God as a higher power, you got a higher power, keep working at it. But, it, but like I said, it took recovery to bring me back to Christ. And it has. It's amazing that that program will lead people where it leads them. Mm -hmm. But it's what church is. To me, it's what Jesus, I mean, planned on the church to really be. Small groups, you're doing life together, um, getting vulnerable, worship and praise. And I, I mean, you don't have to have a mask on to walk in to mm -hmm. celebrate recovery. You get to come and you get to just be. And there's nothing better. And it's, the fun part about it, you break bread with the individual before you even go sit with them and praise. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> get you a nice meal. Yeah. You can't go wrong with the food. Yeah. I didn't even eat none of it last night, but it's Valente's and it's always good. So. Valente's is so good. Yeah, and I didn't eat either. I didn't have time. No, I was still <laughs> full from that. That sandwich was huge. Yeah. So if I could give, can we give a shout out to that place? Why not, man? Yeah, Vinny's on Hampton. Down Is that where it was, Vinny's on Hampton? Yeah, that's what, that's what I was saying. It had to be right down the street from the hill because we were close to 64. No, we were close to 44. I'm in the wrong spot. Yeah, it wasn't so, It wasn't Hampton. We we got off at Hampton when we were on our way out there. No, but yeah. Vinny's Italian beef. No, They, they could Google that. Iv Ivanhoe. There you go. It was Ivanhoe. Ivanhoe and Olif. Olifia. Right there on the spot. And man, it was best pastrami sandwich I've ever had. I'll agree. Now the best. <clears throat> now we'll move into Romans 12 too then. Vinny's was great. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. The renewing of our mind happens when we say, I'm not God. It starts there, like having that willingness to, to say that there is a God. But when it really happens is right here, when we're justified in Christ by accepting him as our Lord and Savior. 
there is a God and I need God. Yes. And that's what happens. That's the renewing of our mind. Then we'll be able to figure out what God's will is for our life because our, our minds will be transformed. Amen. Amen. I got another couple. Good. Proverbs 16, 9, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Mm, you're not kidding. And then also uh, Romans 8, 18. <clears throat> Excuse me. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It shall be revealed. It shall be revealed. On his timing. <clears throat> on his timing, his way. Absolutely. Look, man, step three has been a blast. Yeah. It ain't done. We'll see you next week. That's right. So in closing, what do you have, Michael? Uh, life's good. Just give it up. Just give it up. Mm. Let go of your will. I should say, I've let go of mine. It's a daily battle. But the more I let go, the more promises I see. Love it. Mm. What do you got, D? I'm going back to the, the prosperity part of it. I mean, I worked my butt off years back and I made decent money and I made good money and I made even more money I should have been making. But I for, I truly found my prosperity in life in Christ when I took a job making less than half of what I did by the hour and never wanted for anything. Mm -hmm. Never really needed for anything. It was always, I get God provided everything I did. I was the most prosperous I was, making less money than I ever had legally before. I had to throw that word in there. So. Legally before. Legally before. <laughs> you got to love it. It took me a second. <laughs> For those of you that are listening that, that have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now's the time. Yes. I mean, you have not known riches until you have allow Jesus to lead your life. You have, you have no clue what is in store for you and what God wants to do in and through you until you surrender. And we got to have a higher power before we can move past this. And Jesus Christ is the best one there is. Yes. The one and the only. Hey, we wouldn't be here today sharing this on a podcast if he was not. I'm just happy he was there and got the experience last night. Yes. Oh, I'll be back. Yeah. Right. I'll see you next week. Yeah, without a doubt. Two nights in a row with you guys? Unbelievable. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. We're on all podcast platforms. Check us out on Facebook at Awaken Sober. Um, gentlemen. Tactile Turn. Tactile Turn. Can't forget our sponsor. Oh, no, love Man, those pens. I almost pens. did. Yeah. And I, I've heard a lot about Will's testimony. A lot of people are, are happy to hear it. Yes. So. Yeah. I Thank try to get will. it to be able to survive, uh, to spread it on Facebook into the BST group. But he goes, let's not do it because it's not a BST. And I'm like, they could buy, sell, trade you. It'd be all right. Yeah, yeah. why not? <laughs> buy, sell, trade that testimony. Yeah. Uh, I've had an individual come up to me and said that was the one of the, like, the top three of, the, of our shows that they enjoyed the most was that testimony. So thank you, Will, for coming out here. Doing, yeah. or coming on here. He didn't really come out of here. Yeah. But coming on here and doing We're that Coming out us. there. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will be out there. Want to close us? From all those. From all of us here at Awake and Sober. We'll see you guys next week. All right. God bless. Peace. Peace.